What is the choice of IG? Callista, you mentioned. Ash is still there. You would think it should be the Ash. You're right, though, that they could even just take away the Lux early on, pair that with alongside oh, the Ash, and then have a strong pushing lane. But it's been jungler before. We saw Ning pick up Graves. Tien did the same in game four. It has been Tien's most played champion, so if IG goes for it, and why we've seen Ning continuously go for it, that could be the reason, because it has been the most comfortable champion yep. for Tien. But it also typically does pair quite well in this first round with the Ash. Let's see, because the Ash is the trade-off. I really like that you brought that up. Been a priority in the past. Rookie slapped in game four on the Zoe. This would surprise me for the fact that this is not a champion that Doombi plays. No. So there's no priority to pick it up, right? No, there's no reason to take it away this early. But I guess instead, like, I don't understand why you'd want to counter pick jungle. You know, quote unquote counter pick, yeah. right? Because that's what you're assuming you're picking up the support here, the Lux matchup so it doesn't get banned. That is and usually a what you see is, you know, the Caitlyn paired alongside the Lux. Of course, in the West, they also use Morgana quite a bit. True. Either champion does quite well for sieging down those turrets, taking those plates, and ensuring yourself a strong bot lane matchup. I haven't seen Chris playing either one recently in solo queue, so that could be a sign because, let's be honest, Kaylin is not left open in the scrims these teams are playing, nope. so I bet neither of them have much experience in these matchups lately. Well, you got the Thresh there instead. Don't even want to look at the Lux. So a very strong engage on the bottom lane. And... This has been a very different draft of what we've already seen with the Volley Bear alongside. It is, it is a flex, but we need to remember that for FPX, this is typically a top lane pick. Yep. And I even think with the movement speed nerf on Q, it does feel a bit more awkward in the jungle. It feels worse in both roles, obviously, but we do see the Graves coming out for Ning now. You need a solo lane, you need a support for IG. And we know where IG's going to go with it because it's always been last pick top and even more so now, right? When yep. they've already shown the Thresh. So I wonder where IG goes with fourth pick because typically in the LPL, the answers we see into Thresh are Leona Novice. It is these tanky and gaugey supports that, you know, the Thresh looks for a hook and then you're able to usually just ignore it like with the Leona and Zenith Blade to the AD carry and set them behind. That, that does fit balance style much more as well. We are still getting those solo lane banned though from FPX. The Jace predominantly has been banned all series long. His favorite champion is Split. By far. And it, I mean, it does so well. You can play it in pretty much any matchup. It's obviously a signature of the shy pick. It would set them up quite well for a siege comp. They'd be pretty AD heavy, but yep. it's IG. They don't care about that. That's true. He's still got to find out what he's playing in that top lane. Callista gets the secondary round of ban. I just wonder what Dwinby will pick up in this mid lane up against the Zoe. Obviously, he could go back with the Orianna, which sure. sure you lose pressure, but you are at least able to farm up. Typically, when you have a Caitlyn in the bot lane, though, I think securing some mid jungle prio to be able to heavily play around and influence that bot side is nice. And then you deny the Ash plays as well. Yep. But I don't think Duinby's champion pool really opens him up to this kind of play. He has such a wide champion pool, but you're right. And there's that Leona that we were talking about, right? Picking this tankier engaged champion that if he gets a hook onto your AD carry, you can oh, just wow. go. Ooh. Lulu mid. Yeah. Lulu mid has just been locked in. Two AD carries on the composition of FPX. And Duinby has played this as split. Yep. And it's obviously a throwback just for him in his career in general where he has been much more of a supportive mid laner, having these carry junglers alongside him. But having that Ash in the bot lane along with this Lulu to eventually get the Arden sensor out is going to be massive. And you got an Orn for the Shy to lock in. So, Lyric, a bit more engaged with the Leona. This, this is nice. I like what I see out of both comps, but I really love IG's. IG's is just, you know, stock standard this meta, right? This is what you could see in many, many games. We're gonna have, I would assume, pressure in the mid lane coming out from the Zoe. This isn't a matchup I'm too familiar with. How often do we see Lulu? But True. obviously from the side of FPX, right? It is about waiting a bit longer into the game. You want to get the Arden Sensor out. You want to get some of those supportive items to buff up the Caitlyn in the, in the Kindred and then start playing this game for structures. It's all about artillery. It's all about sieging down these turrets. Artillery I like, especially since FBX have been the slower team that we've talked about. Who is going to Worlds? There's so many questions I have to ask. Again, you said LGD are watching this series, probably laughing. They face the winner of this for the fourth seed at Worlds tomorrow.
IG or FPX, one world champion is going home, and IG just had a very convincing game four, while FPX throughout the whole series have been the better team. But it comes down to a game five, it's a best of one, it's only one chance left remaining. Doombi opts into Lulu, while Rookie's back on his Zoe. The big question mark to me is FPX is throwing us a curveball. Anything can happen at this point. We're about to enter Summoner's Rift for the final game of the night. The final game of this series leads to disaster for one, hope for another. Can IG make the run again like they did in 2019? It's another game five. They love these game fives, but it ain't a Vladimir in the top for the shy. He's on his own once more. The scrapes play, and we enter Summoner's Rift. One thing we can be sure of this game is that IG want the, the scrappier brawls early on. They have more CC, they have more early game bursts coming out from things like the Zoe and the Ash. They want blood, they want fights. They want to take these early Rift Heralds at 8 minutes, try and get these early Dragons as well. For FPX, we said it's a bit of a slower pace game. It's about getting the setup needed in front of these turrets with the Caitlyn Traps coming out, yep. with the Lulu Shields, with the Ardents, with the Redemptions, Tien getting in there as well. And Chris really used in a bit of a disengaged capacity. The Threshers so far in the series have been the better out of the supports. But Balan on Leona this time around, alongside Papu got Ash. They made a trade-off of 80 carries. And we've got a very compelling draft to finish off. I like it very much the team styles as Tien starting on his blue up towards his top side. Ning will be on the same path as he's on his red. Thinking about this mid lane matchup, I would assume that Duinbi should be able to do pretty well early on because Zoe's wave clear actually isn't that strong early. Like your, your paddle start does like 20% of even the caster minions HP. Sure. Lulu can always just auto attack you when you walk forward. She's quite strong coming in with the damage she gets from her passive as well. Cool. You always have your polymorph if you do look for some kind of long range paddle star. And j just like this. Yeah. It feels like you can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. One of the strongest things about Lulu's kit that's so underrated is the damage coming from her, her passive. She also obviously has the airy, so those short trades are really nice for her. The little lance feels really nice as well. You can attach to a minion and send it through the minion wave. Yeah, and I mean, even your Glitter Lance does much better into the minion wave early on than something like a Paddle Star, yeah, right? You true. definitely need those levels, especially waiting for that Lost Chapter for Rookie. Where well, we always talk about Rookie, we talk about Zoe, you mentioned it in Game 4, where he has to find those angles between the minions, so he's a lot more uh, limited by what he can trade with. And the thing is, we saw on the, the Colonel's graph that it actually favored IG late game. The thing I question is that IG's comp is very burst reliant, right? We have a Zoe, we have a Grace, all about burst. You have a Lulu ultimate, you have a ton of shielding that's going to be increased later on with the item she gets, and you have the Lamb's Respite. You're not going to be bursting out anyone. And crucially, you actually have a frontline in Gimgoon. Crispy talk about keeping away so that Elderbeer can keep distance, and Dilby can sit next to him. So it'll be interesting. Of course, the Colonel, just for everyone out there, goes based on statistics of champions winning at stages of the game. Uh, you know, he takes the 10 secret herbs and spices of League of Legends and kind of applies them to Summoner's Rift. Well, we'll see. At the very least, the Shy back on Orn. He's gone Doran's shield. I'm sorry, Lyric. It's not the blade Ooh. that we're still waiting to see. I'm just interested in what Balan's doing. So it looks like he's checking... He was checking Wolves, yep. thinking that potentially Tien had invaded. Tien, of course, did earlier on. In good timing there, getting Skull. That was a mark for Tien, who... Oh, now, they're collapsing. He's trying to go over the wall. He flashes immediately. He wants a quick draw. I guess that was the right decision in the end. Yeah, and he luckily also got the Nimbus Cloak as well, so even if Tien and Gimu thought to keep going, he didn't get that bit of movement speed. Obviously, this is going to hurt him a little bit, but Grave's not really a champion we think of. You know, flashing in to make these plays in lanes regardless. Yep. You have set up in all of your lanes anyway. The Shy, especially once he gets that level 6 point. Bot lane as well, wants a few more levels. We see IG's bot lane getting pressured right now because, of course, even early on, right, Thresh is a ranged champion into the Leona. LWX, if he can space properly, can do a lot of work. Especially when they know Tien has backed and he's heading towards that bottom side too. Also helps out as Rookie just clears the wave and gets the shot. So IG spot lane, it is a lot more of like a kill lane to me in the sense that we are waiting for our level 6 combo yep. coming out from Leona plus Ash. And then trying to combo Ning and Rookie in as well because 
When you have Zoe Graves, it is a lot about that mid jungle. It does feel around these objectives, though. The chain CC from IG is going to be pretty crucial. Trouble Bubble, Chain of the Arrow, the Soul Flea you just mentioning. And the Shy is called the Forge God. There is a lot of layering there, as now they're going to be going on to Rookie. Death Sentence dodged away from Rookie, runs into Brush. The Fog of War helps a little bit. He clears the wave anyway, but he's in a bit of trouble. Might have to flash out of this one, but Tian and Chris are waiting over the wall. Flashes for distance, excuse me. I don't believe that was doing me in the end. Who's about to pick oh! up first blood? That goes over to the Lulu mid. The cheeky thing you always notice with both Rookie and the Shy, though, is when they do have these kinds of deaths, they always prioritize getting the wave in to hopefully not leave it in a bad place. That still did take long enough, though, where obviously Doonby is able to come out and clear this one. But Bao Lan. Holding it. He Doobie. knows who the carry of the team is. Yeah, still be still doing a bit of damage, but Baolan may have delayed enough to... Nope, Minion Wave still going to get denied, goes to the support. And we're, we're once again seeing the how valuable having this Pryo in bot lane is, yeah. because it's allowing for Chris to constantly be in river, constantly be in the enemy jungle, and even hover around the mid lane. And Baolan has the match, right? It's not like he can stay in the wave and try and find something on LWX. Yeah, and even, like you're saying, he has to, like, try to match. Yeah. He will always be there later on, so FPX will always have the onus to make the play. But a good start from FPX. Ning is going to be starting up this dragon, though. Tien on the bottom side, but you can see Rookie gets to shove out the wave as he returns the lane, and Ning should be getting a nice bit of experience from this while Tien clears out his Raptors meanwhile. Ning going for a bit of a cheeky one, but he did know that FPX's bot lane was going for that reset. Rookie also is having the push in mid lane right now. We're going into an Infernal or a Cloud Rift. I like that Rookie also, when he died, got the early Doran's uh, ring as well on top yeah. of he had already had. So increasing his pushing power just by a little bit. And that extra bit of health might come in handy too. Now hits level yep. 6 with a portal jump. And... What do we think? At level 6, of course, Doombi does have the wild growth available, but Rookie with the extra range now has a lot more burst potential. As that almost hit onto Doombi. Balance level 4. The center's dodged away from turns onto Doombi. Center's played at the ready if Rookie wants to come in, but Ops not to. Balan still just trying to match and make sure that Rookie has a laning phase. For for FPX, you just keep doing what you're doing, right? Have Chris weaving between the lanes because you just want to set up LWX to take this plating. Arrow for the clans. Puff wants to take this 1v1, but Tien's going to make it unfavorable soon. Puff is still going for Tien. Shows flashes away out of respect. Here comes the Kate Linaldi. But LWX in a lot of trouble as the Shy is coming in. Call the Forge God wants to kill LWX. He gets knocked up, flashed on, collapsed by Mr. Orn himself, the Shy with great timing, and Tien now has to respect him. That was a big mistake coming in from LWX, though, because, right, the Shy started channeling the TP, and LWX didn't care. He just walked forward, thought, okay, there's nothing the Shy can do. We're not done, sir. Onto Baolan. Press the attack, initiated as Tien going forward. The Shy is still here. Wants that Searing Charge, but Tien flashes it to get onto Baolan, but the re-engage is there. Wild Growth is onto the jungle as Gimgood has teleported in, and this is the LPL with a double kill going to Tien. FPX can feel it in their bones. Great turn coming from FPX. Tien being a massive playmaker going forward on that one into the Shy. And Great job by Gimgoon as well as Chris to zone out Rookie actually to flash away early on. There was nothing he could do in that play, but Ning's very smart trying to answer on the opposite side of the map. But guess what? Look at your mini map. Crisp and Tien are on the way over. Ning has the respect. Gimgoon and Doombi start up the Rift Herald, or at least take the leash from where it was. Baoland still doesn't have his ulti. I don't think I don't think IG can contest. Still want to walk towards at least add some pressure. That reset almost came through, and it oh. does! As I speak, that gives a bit more time for IG to push in mid. I don't think they knew it happened. No. No wards available. Okay. Crisis averted. Uh, I still think FPX would have been fine at the end of the day. Do oh, yeah. going to pick that up. Yep. There we go. So. And remember, th things like that are always interesting because... Right, he, he's not typically going to be the mobile member on the map. Even this game, we've seen it's been all about Crisp and Tien coming mid, not about doing be getting out of lane and going elsewhere. Yeah. So that could really limit where FPX dropped this Herald. So let's have a look again, because the Shy was down here from the TP. And F we see Tien going forward. Actually, nice flash out from him as well to just guarantee that Balan is going to die. Great play from Duinby and Crisp. Chris going forward. Chris and Gimbu now zoning out Rookie. But... 
Just a bit of an overstep coming out from the side of IG, which has been a defining yes. uh, a defining term this series. Series overstep. My words were going to be exactly that, sir. I think the biggest part for me now, though, is seeing Warriors on Tiana 2-0 Kindred. And we know what this has led in previous games for FPX. And plus the shielding you mentioned and how FPX will scale into this game, it's already a great start considering that LWX has gotten most of his lane underway. That the Lulu picked up a nice kill earlier on against Rookie as well. And we pointed out earlier that FPX definitely do much better as this game goes on. For the side of IG, they're really going to have to play off of like things like vision denial, being able to get vision that they probably shouldn't have from the Hawk shot, yeah. playing off picks coming out from the Sleepy Trouble Bubble and the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. For FPX, they're fine just taking this game at the pace it's, it's being played. With a gold lead that is just enough for them to feel very confident 10 minutes in. This goes back to what we pointed out earlier, right? Of where we wanted to see Ning and Rookie link up, get mid pressure, and then hover towards bot side. They're doing just that, but Crisp and LWX are respecting. They're backing away from the turret. Puff is going to get a bit of turret planning. That's what this means, though. Rookie comes back into the mid lane, and LWX and Crisp can just walk back in. Remember, there's a BF sword here on this Caitlyn with a fresh that's almost level six. So now left in 2v2 lane. Doombi trying to move in as well. Tien is down the bottom side but spotted out on a good control ward by Invictus game. And they're coming through. Rookie's still here. He could throw a Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Rookie's got a blasting one, by the way. There's I not know. a lost chapter. So. I, I just noticed that as well. I was like, huh, I'm guessing he just didn't have enough gold, but... True. Picked up the Doran's Ring before, right? Didn't have enough for the lost chapter. Riptail's going to be put bot, though. Tien now wants to hop over the wall. And Gim here we go. Gimgun's covering mid as well, so... If any shenanigans break out, very easy for Gimgun to make his way over. But now I'm going to head back up towards top side. Meanwhile, <laughs> three plays <laughs> for the Shy's Ord. He already picked up a kill. He's got his Sunfire Cape. Epix might be getting collapsed on here. And a rookie decides against it, walks back to his lane. Do you remember all those games we had of IG winning where, like, their four man would just win the game pretty much? But we'd, like, every five minutes, we'd cut to a camera of the Shy just <laughs> taking, like, plates or yeah, turret on the opposite yeah, yeah. side of the map. Happens actually more often than you think. It's kind of like the Shy reset in a best of five after the first three games, the Shy died at least Ooh. 20 times. The Shy this time using that window. So, right, he got to push in because Gimgun had used his window to roam to the opposite side of the map. Now the Shy answering in kind. He pushed in. He hovered over and made sure IG can safely do this dragon. Now he's going back up the top lane. Leads to a Cloud Soul here this time around, not the Infernal. I love the, the Zoe RNG of, you know, what you get depends on how aggressive you and your enemy laner can yeah. play. We saw Duin be respecting, realizing, okay, well, if this guy's Ignite, it's it's his time. He just drops it there as well. Good training, though, from Doombi. He's got his Athenes already picked up. Benefit of the Lulu is very cheap build, much like we see on the Karma. Well, FPX gets spotted out on another control ward. Tian trying to go deep into enemy territory. There's no camps here, but at least safeguards LWX who can push in and get first turret blood and get a bit of gold into that lead for FPX. And just goes back to highlight how well FPX have been playing, like you pointed out. Balan constantly forced to match the roams from Crisp, so Eldivis was able to get all his turret plating on his own. Shy just wants to collapse. Guys, when it comes in, shielding's nice, but in the end, the Shy's just going to turn around with Grasp and try and get an another couple of procs. Funny that Gimgun's actually up in levels, as the Shy will now reach level 10. Tank versus tank. And it's going to get influenced by Balan in a second. We're just stuck up here, I guess. Oh, <laughs> away you go. I like how he's once again making his way to towards that Iceborne Gauntlet. Yeah. I mean, I guess most of their damage is AD, but again, I know people will be molding at him getting that extra mana rather than the extra health you would get from the uh, Abyssal Mask. True. Would help the Zoe out as well, right? True. But uh, FPX now grouping up towards the top side, and this is a rotation we talked about in game one, I believe. Where now we're just seeing pretty standard stuff move and change sides of the map. Yeah, and this is what you do. I mean, you would do it on either of these AD carries, but you see it on Caitlyn, right? You're rotating around the map, as we pointed out. I like to use the word artillery piece. Yep. You're kind of set up like like a giant machine gun in the middle. Everything's around you. You have the traps surrounding you, and your job is just to go to work on those turrets. You don't really want scrappy fights breaking out. You don't want 
you you need a lot of vision. You, you want everything in your sight. You want to know what's going on, and it allows you to do what you do best, which is just breaking down those turrets. Cleanliness of play, right? And, and especially since star plating was still available at the time. Nice bit of damage there from Rookie, but... Also, I want to point out something we didn't talk about, that Yo. we obviously saw LWX go for the lethal tempo, which is something people started doing more of yeah. recently, because Caitlyn obviously doesn't have an attack speed steroid, which is one of the reasons you don't usually go for it, but yeah. you don't have a lot of bad lanes anymore, so you don't need to go towards that fleet footwork, so yeah. even just getting a bit more is quite nice. Also started with the Storm Razors here, so we've seen, you know, pretty much this be the build, right? Not IE first. We've actually seen quite a bit of IE first. Have we? But this does at least give you that nice... Like, pseudo-power spike, obviously, okay. it's cheaper, but you get much less AD, which I think is why we still see a lot of people go IE first for, you know, more AD for your headshot and sure. things along those lines. But getting that slow is quite nice for setting up some kills in your lane. Shannon Kassara used again. Puff, this is the second time around he's doing it. But this time around, LWX Essence versus Storm Razor, and LWX gets some nice trades in while the rest of the team's trying to group around this. TN takes a trouble bubble, uses the ulti preemptively. In comes the burst, end of the line, collateral damage. Not used. It was smoke screen in the end, I apologize. But Tien manages to get away. But there you go. There's the burst and pick potential you mentioned earlier on. IG doing a great job at at least understanding their win conditions. And so far, they've been the team to pick up a lot of these objectives. They are sitting at two Drakes, now taking this Rift Herald. Objective control at maximum. Ning so far ahead and see us once again on this grave. Also, next Dragon's coming up in a minute and 15 seconds. They can sit on this Herald and just use it, as we talked about that, that kind yeah. of... Uh, What's the word? Do you want to use plateau? No. Not plateau. Transition. Not transition either. Transmission. <laughs> you don't even know what <laughs> word I'm looking for. Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> as a We didn't have breakfast. As a cycle, we didn't. We've uh, been here a while, as you know, some of the fans will figure out in another show. But uh, this today has delivered everything. And I have to say, big thank you to all the fans for joining us this season as what's been chaotic. Five games for the finals, five games for IG and FPX. This is literally eSports at its peak. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yes, it is. You know, it's, 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 screw every other game. This is where it happens. But hey. I hope you didn't want to work with anyone else. We have Dragon coming up in 25 seconds. All of FPX is here to get Vision. Nice, sleepy, trouble bubble. And there's a lot of burst oh. damage. It's all flared in. Chanakras Arrow, this is long range engage. Janus Peak Rookie flashes forward. Chris, Death Sentence doesn't connect. The Wild Growth was used, but now Bao Lan comes into the middle of Gimgoon as the ulti over the wall to escape. Here we go for the Shy, though, who lines them up. Two is the number. Chris gets low at half health. IG have gotten pressure, and LWX oh. takes one to the face. It takes one to no one as collateral damage used in the end. Now no wild growth, no lambs respite. They can't come in. All of those tools that are used to survive the IG burst are gone. And IG now on soul point. They are on soul point. They get 10% cooldown reduction on those ulties like the Shies. And Enchanted Crystal Arrow plus Solar Flare. This is good for IG. As they manage to, again, as you mentioned, threaten that window in another 4 minutes, 45 seconds. In one of the most important parts is getting that early Elder. Okay, the Shy might be caught out, though. I'm going to turn back around and say the Shy, what's going on? He's 1-1. One and one. Doesn't want more deaths than kills, but low on mana. Not too low on health. It Hysterics. Isn't I thought of the word. Decoy! They could have used it as a decoy, decoy for the dragon, but guess what? They didn't have to. They still have the Rift Herald. Yes, they do. Ning's going to get the enhance back with it. And which lanes are you going to put it down, sir? You think right down mid? Do we run? Do we let Shelly run it down? Probably not. There's no mid lane like inner turret. They would have to go two sides, get pressure. A group is four or five to get that pressure in mid. But they actually don't have pushing sides. Like Orange shouldn't really be able to push in Gimgun. But now Gimgun's resetting, so I guess it's always viable. Sorry, rookie's just throwing out bubbles left and right. Is a Luden's Echo now picked up. It is two items for Duel Me. Again, cheaper build. Arden Sensors there. Let's have a bit more gold than Rookie. Uh, it is good evaluation time because LWX in this Caitlyn has two items with a Rapid Fire Cannon. Puff's still sitting on one, but a lot of gold. He's actually down a thousand in the 80 carry matchup. I mean, we saw LWX get all of those plates. Yes, we did. So, quite expected for him to be up. Shine doing fine in this matchup. And now we wait for the Baron to come oh, up. Maybe they're dropping it mid as you as you expected, Hysterics. Yeah, maybe they are. Or should I call you Apathetics? You shouldn't. Okay. You should call me Hysterics. I was told if I'm going to do any analysis, I just call myself Hysterics and leave it at that. 
Huh. You know, one day I want to be the coach of like TL or, You're right. or V5. You want the same name. Yeah. You know, to coach a team first, I need to coach a Challenger Series team. You know, they're not just going to let me do the big leaves. It's a shy. Solo kill territory here with the W. Fury at the oh. ready. Ulti on top. Call the Forge God's going to come in. But Ning's here. Kimgun 240s. He flashes away. It's matched by Ning. And the burn is going to be massing the Searing Charge. Gim Goon has had such a good series, now scratches his head. And he solo killed the Shy so many times this series, he thought, okay, I'm gonna get to do it again for free. Ning was there waiting in the wings, really clutch, flashes forward, gets the Phase Rush and Nimbus Cloak off as well, so he's all the movement speed to keep up. Gim Goon realized at the last second, okay, I just need to take down the Shy, but was bursted out too quickly. And that's gonna give the Shy more ability to scale into the, you know, the mid game, get those three, four items as the Orn. Already the Bramble Vest picked up. Right now, Rookie's at the point of maximum burst. That's he it. has Oblivion Orb, he has the Sorcerer Shoes out. This man is ready to take people down, but we need to remember, FPX have the tools to deal with burst. The yes. thing is, if they get chunked out too early like they did in the last fight, right, having to use the Wild Growth on Chris, that's kind of the formula for FPX being having to back off early. Or if they get separated, right? You know, it's that pick onto one, two people without the Lulu nearby, without Chris for the disengage. They are like a ball comp, right? Yeah. They, they all want to, like, be near each other. It's it's all in the setup. You are like a five-man group. You're a family. You can see as well, Mikhail's picked up. The priority for Chris, I really like, is the first item to help LWX. If that kind of heightens your point. It's all about this Caitlyn, keeping her alive alongside Tien, of course, as the other AD carry with now Black Cleaver. Look, he's hanging off to the side, sees him. And it's like free money, except it's got a string on the end. Can you ever see those cartoons? You know, yeah, they pull in yeah, the $5 yeah, dollar yeah, note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People uh, laughing behind all, the bushes. All those, all those old cartoons. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dragon Soul coming up in a minute. Yes. This is the real here we go. 21 minutes into the game. Game Very early doesn't soul. have TP, so I expect him to start walking down. That does look like what he's doing. Colonel weighing in. Oh, like, gee. LWX. Oh, big crit. All right. Well, Puff's going to heal that up. The Shy's massive right now, though. Yep. I actually don't know. Check on LWX. Remember, he has a oh, healing. Puff, Puff almost dies. Oh, my lord. But meanwhile, Rookie comes in off the side. Kim Goon takes the chunk himself. I think that should guarantee FPX taking yeah. Dragon. That was actually that was absolutely massive. FPX might even get the turret on top of that as well. We'll yeah. see. Shielding goes out. Goes forward as Rookie comes in off the side. Wants to kill and beat. Crucial is that Zoe gets the pick. And coming back in is the Ash. That's burn damage onto Tien. Call the Forge God's gonna line up. It's now doing me in a bit of trouble as well. The trouble hits on the side. Rookie gets Tien as Baolan jumps on in. IG's fight. This could be it as the Shy doesn't die. LWX in the middle of nowhere. Doombe can't shield him. And Rookie does it again. Trouble bubble forward, denies the Dark Passage for a moment, but Doombe manages to get away. IG are smiling right now as they head towards the Baron. And IG are going to be able to push this advantage forward, get back out on the map. They're going to have all the priority. FPX, when it matters most, succumbing to the pressure. Tien couldn't use his ulti, and now in front of the Baron as Baolang gets low. Teleport's going to be in from the Shire to take this one up. Ning needs to use an early smite. When is he going to burn that down? <laughs> Thinks he's going to survive and probably is absolutely right. Smite to secure. IG are getting towards that moment where you say they could have done it. And this is where it all started. Massive burst coming out from Rookie. Called the Forge got opened by the Shy. Such an amazing sleepy trouble bubble. And he doesn't even get a chance. No lambs or spite anywhere. Bow land flashing forward. As we said, this man always goes into the fray. Weird decision by Gimgun to all back into the rest of the members by IG. Yeah. FPX picked up Dragon, they prevented Soul, but I don't think IG cares. Imagine if we got to the Lambs respite for Tien, and then FPX might have survived. Could have been a different story, right? That one pick changes everything. Baron now picked up, and Invictus Gaming, after looking pretty shocking between games one and three, have really picked up the series and may have made the impossible a reality. We stopped believing. We I did. told you, we stopped believing Hysterix, and that's all we had to do this whole time. But IG, man, how could IG have one of the worst series know. we've seen and still know. get back in this? 
and potentially go to Worlds. Isn't it crazy? How could the Shy go 1-10 in 10 on AD Kennen and then, and then win and go to the next stop. round? The trick is to start playing on. Don't put him on that anymore. As Rookie gets burnt down over the wall, they're going to take the engage. Smoke screen is good to tur, though. Strong level lands, but IG can't follow up. With the Baron buff, they're leaving the Shy by himself, forcing FPX to rotate through their jungle that's watered. Like game one, we pointed out they, they need to commit to one side. The problem is this time, FPX don't really have engage. Yeah. They have death sentence and they have Gimgoon ulting in if IG walk too far forward. Is that going to happen? Trouble all blocked by minion wave. Another thing we need to remember, siege comps suck when they're behind. Yes. If you're not able to get in front of the turrets, dish all that damage you need, you're quite squishy. It's very easy to dive onto you. Especially against the burst here, right? When the burst gets a level up, when they're so far ahead, it's hard to deal with. Call the Forge Gold was used in the bottom lane. Mid turret goes down meanwhile, and FPX, do they use any summons? I don't think so. Ace in the hole, blocked nicely by Nick. And IG just going to be able to keep going. They wait for the wave. They're going to pick up this bottom tier two turret. They should have a wave that's about to come in if they want to keep going, but it looks like resets are coming out now. Do you think you need to apologize for saying the word suck on broadcast? It's a very naughty word. Just saying. No, I, I feel like that was uh, the least offensive word that's, said today. That's very true. Maybe I'll apologize for what I said in game number three. No, game number four it was. There's my apology. Hey, Thornmouth picked up. <laughs> this is, uh, you I know. Won. He did this last game as well. Oh, wait. And Chenicle Solaro, though. Trump level lands oh! on the crit. Cleanses the way. Batland in for the engage. Flayed away. The Shy comes in. Searing Charge goes wide. Right through the middle as Rookie can't connect the paddle star. The wild growth was used, though, Lyric. That's what I saw. Dragon not up for another two minutes. Oh my god, he just keeps going. Every time I see a bubble fly out, I'm expecting it now. And FBX have to go all the way back to in front of their base. While IG keeps searching for those picks. And this is where their comp thrives. They're controlling vision in the enemy jungle. They're, you know, using this terrain scaling that Zoe has to throw out these sleepy trouble bubbles. Just setting up to find that perfect pick. Bleeding out the enemy team by taking all their jungle camp. So Tien's not getting many resources. Yep. He's not able to buy the items he needs. As Papa is not given any resources by his team either, and has to walk across the map to take Raptors. <laughs> I just love the fact that we're facing down the barrel of FPX. There's a chance. Remember, if they lose this game, they will not defend their Worlds title. They will not be going to Worlds in 2020 if they lose this game. And IG with a 4K gold lead at 27 minutes is indicating that that could be as such. Like this was obviously not the most high-quality series. We don't need to point that out, but no. FPX fared much better than most people thought they would. Yes. Gim Goon played much better this series than I think anyone expected. Again, he was looking miserable in, in the split. And, again, the fact that this got to five games, I'd say it's pretty commendable for FPX. Though it's not over yet, so I don't want to talk no. like they're dead and out of the water. They have this Caitlyn. They have this Kindred as well. The shielding, you talked about protection and how FPX would scale into this, even against the Ornn, the Zoe, the Ash, what we talked about with IG. One, one fight is yes. all they need. To go and have a chance at defending their title. LGD watching this one for the potential 4th oh feature level my land. Oh god, he doesn't miss. Rookie does not miss. You're exactly right. Puff sitting mid for the Enchanted Crystal Arrow and the opportunity. Do you believe in magic hysterics? I do. Do you want to show me something? Because in 25 seconds, if IG lose this dragon, I have to say that's going to be magical <laughs> for maybe oh not in Tentacle Sour onto Chris. Oh, Zenith Blade doesn't connect, though. Saved. That is a key engage tool for IG that, down. That was unlucky because if Puff, like, the, the bubble was going to zone off uh, Caitlyn into that direction anyway. Had Puff been able to, like, read that better, it feels like that definitely could have been a dead LWX, but True. still they're able to force him back. They're gonna get this Drake. Now we're just waiting on Elder. Okay, soul in hand. At the very least, for someone like Ning, that's great. Let me think across the board. You know, the Shy as well, just to run at someone. But Elder in five minutes. Look, I know I gave the FPX protagonist story a you couple did. games ago, but what, like, the best story would be IG meeting top esports in World Finals. We know that would be the best. Yeah. Jackie Love against the rest of IG once again. Puff says I'm We better. didn't get that in playoffs. No, we didn't actually. We got it in spring, but it wasn't as heated back and then. We got it in summer in the regular split where IG actually beat top esports. Yeah. 
one of the the second loss, I think, after V5. Yes. Give me the storylines. Give me the narratives. Uh, it's a shame we don't have five seeds like we deserve. You know, maybe we would have. <laughs> I think people are going to be arguing against four seeds after watching this series, my friend. That's actually true. Hey, but tomorrow might look better. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe LGD just blow whoever wins this out of the water. Imagine five seeds at world. I mean, it's just crazy enough that one of these oh, teams could be in play-ins. Oh. Old Tien's walking around, but no, they want the AD carry. He cleanses away. He takes a Dark Passage. That is a Summoner spell just for a Trouble Bubble with Baron up. And they have such a great turn from Baron, so they can start this. Just bait FPX in. They have the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Leona's whole kit is amazing. They have the Call of the Forge God as well. And Rookie has a hose. He's zoning them away. Kim Goon's in first. FPX need the steal here. Otherwise, IG are just going to take this away. Baron gets smited down now for the engaged Enchanted Crystal Arrow is there. The Death Sentence doesn't connect as Kim Goon's the target. Runs away for his life. He's low. He's ignited. He's dropping down. Tien's ulti comes out, though, while IOG channel into this moment. It's all theirs. Balan, Rookie, they all live as Chris gets ordered. Invictus Gaming somehow have done it. How do IG keep stealing away these series and winning these regional matches? Regional finals are their speciality, Lyric. One, two minions with Rookie TPing in with the Baron buff and those death timers, you know where they're heading. Yep, they're going straight for the Nexus. They're going straight to LGD tomorrow. To make that impossible run when everyone counted Invictus Gaming out. They showed up in a game five. LGD, are you watching? The regional qualifiers are Invictus Gaming's speciality. Goodbye, FBX, the 2018 world champions are coming next. That series was so stressful to watch. That series was also so amazing to watch, so full of bloody, so full of different League of Legends.